when Mr. War comes, it's math time. It is, because that's why I'm here. Like, it's not like I'm here, you guys, to teach you how to use a fidget spinner. Oh, that'd be really cool, but I really don't know how to use them. So, you know, I couldn't really show you, could I? <laughs> anyway, hey, my friends, welcome to another video. We are cruising along here. We're less than 2.6, man. We're already in chapter two. Cool. Now, what is our topic? This is multiply using expanded form. Yeah, you may recall our previous lesson, we did some estimating products. We've been looking at expanded form, how we can take a number, break it apart, right? And show its value. And we're gonna be doing more of that. But through multiplication today, and our central question, this is our purpose. Our purpose. This is why we do math. No, just kidding. This is why we live. Well, no, no, not exactly. This is our purpose today, which is how can you use expanded form to multiply a multi-digit number by a one-digit number. And let's remind ourselves that what that multi-digit number is, multi just means many. Yes, and you know, if we have a lot of digits, then we just have a really large number like, I don't know, 385 is a multi-digit number. Because remember, how many digits are there in math? Yes, I knew you guys would get it. There are only 10, my friends, only 10, not a billion not a trillion, there's only 10. And we're gonna be using those 10 digits that we have in math to make multi-digit numbers, and it's gonna help us multiply by using expanded form. Woo, boy, that was a mouthful. But you know, my friends, we need it. We need to unlock the problem. That's right, my friends, because this is real world, baby. Real world. Real world. Now, as we look at example one, it says use expanded form. Multiply five times 143. Okay. Now they give us the equation five times 143 is equal to. Whenever you have that equal sign, that means what's ever on that side has to be the same, same quantity as on the left. So whatever we write here, it has to have the same quantity. Well, five is already there. The only thing we're breaking apart is the 143. In fact, it says, right, 143 in expanded form. Okay, we know how to do that. Let's do that. Well, the first number, we have a one in the 100 spot. That's just gonna give us 100, wouldn't you say? 100 plus four in the tens place is 40, plus our three. Ooh, this is so easy. And then what do we have here? We have five times 100 plus, ooh, what are we gonna do here? It says use the distributive property. Hmm. So we're gonna take five times 100 plus five times 40. Yes, sir. And then five times three. Oh, I just love when things work out. Isn't that just beautiful? Nice. Let's see what we have to do next. Ooh, now we're getting to the where we have to show, kind of show our mathematics, right? Common Core says, you have to show me that you know. It says, shade the model. Well, let's see what we can do here. It says, think and record. Okay, so we're gonna shade the model. Okay, if we need to, I guess. I don't know, do we need to shade it? Oh, I see, they'll just do the hundreds first. Okay, so we're gonna shade the hundreds. Okay, let me get a color. So maybe we could do like this, you know? I use my highlighter. Yeah. Ooh, pretty. Yeah. Okay. That was fun. So I'm gonna put my 500 in here, I believe. 500. Because we're multiplying that now. We're showing that. Why? Because well, we have that five multiplied by that first little square there using that uh, little rectangle. Five times 100. So now we're gonna take that, the next one we're gonna take the five times 40. Okay, let's take a look at that. When it says we need to shade the next section. Okay, and that's gonna be this one right here. Ooh, I don't know, I'm trying to do my best here. Ooh, yeah, Mr. War is a really good color. I bet he loved his coloring book when he was a kid. Yes, I did, I loved it. I loved the color. Okay, that one was kind of thick. But it does say multiply the tens. We have five times 100, which was the 500 plus. Now we have five times 40, which everybody knows is 200. And why? Because five times four is a simple fact. Gives you 20 plus one more power of 10. Woohoo! Yeah, yeah. Okay. So, and then we have our last one we need to shade in. Oh, yeah. Dun, 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 dun. Okay. Yes, I like Star Wars. Okay, I was just trying to fill the time there. So five times three? Yeah. 15, yeah. Okay, so is it just me or does this seem really, really easy? Now just just add the partial products. Remember that was the one we learned from our last lesson. Partial, partial's not the whole thing, part of it. Oh, look at the word part is right in there. There you go, partial. 
and that's what partial product is. 500 was a partial product, 200 was a partial product, and 15 was a partial product. Now we need to add them all together. We get five because we go and add the ones place, the tens places, of course, there's one, and in the hundreds place, we have seven. So we end up with 715 which is five times 143. Is that really cool? It says, is my answer reasonable over here? Yeah, I think it sounds good. Let's move on. Cool, so this is example two. Use expanded form, again, okay. The gift shop at the animal park orders three boxes of toy animals. Each box has 1,250 toy animals. How many toy animals does the shop order? Hmm, okay, it says multiply. 3 times 1,250. All right, because we have three boxes of that many toy animals in each box. Step one, write 1,250 in expanded form. Again, use the distributive property. Okay, obviously, we have three blanks here. We don't have any ones. We have 1,000, right? Because, ooh, I can already see that down here. 1,000, we have three times 1,000. And we have, ooh, we have our cool little circles back. We have 200 here, woo yeah, and then we have 50. And we don't have anything here because it's one, so zero. We don't even need to put that in expanded form. Then we have three times that 1,000, plus we have three times 200, plus three times 50. This is the distributive property right here. We've distributed the, the 1,000 in, I'm sorry, the 1,250 into three uh, units. Okay, thousands, hundreds, and the ones. So here, I don't have any other lines here, so I guess I'm going to write them down here. Because 3 times 1,000 is 3,000. Plus, here we have our simple facts, which is just 6. We have hundreds. Cool. Here we have our simple facts, 15. Notice I do that a lot. Yeah, it's just, it's just so easy. That way you don't make mistakes. For my 3,000 up here, I put my 600. And I put, ooh, plus, oh, 150. Yeah, I thought I made a mistake there. 150. And then I just simply add my partial product. I get 5. Here I get 7. And three, three thousand three. 3,750. So the shop ordered 3,750. Isn't that amazing? By using these partial products, we're actually able to multiply this relatively large number. I mean, to take a number like 1,250 and multiply it by three. Some of you may already know the actual standard algorithm, but this helps you understand actually what's happening. That's, I think, the, the most important thing about partial products and using the distributive property. It's a really great way to deepen your understanding of multiplication. That's why we're doing it. Just so you know, because sometimes I know when you're doing this math and your teacher is teaching you this and they may, you know, say this and then you're like, why do we have to learn this? This doesn't make sense. Why can't we just do, you know, sorry. I'm sure your voices don't sound like that. My goodness, that sounded like, ooh, I don't know what that was, like an old bird or something. Anyway, um, no, it just means that it deepens our understanding so that we get even better at math. That's the goal. Okay. All right. Okay. Now we come to share and show. Yeah. Cool. And share and show here is, is we're going to find four times 213. Use expanded form. And what I like what they did here for us, so we don't have to really do any work, is they've already set up our area model, by the way. This is when we call this an area. Ooh, that A looks really, really like it was in trouble. Area model. And area models are pretty cool. Yep. And they help us show our thinking now it has our it has our four times 213 you can see across so we're obviously going to have here first we have four times and you can see this is all in parentheses here so you can tell that's all our kind of like our add-ins here even though not really add-ins but 200 plus 10 plus 3. now we have like here's one group second group third group four times 200 four times 10 and then of course we have our four times three and we use the distributive property there yes we did and now we just have to get our partial products. One of them right here. Our simple fact is 8. We have two powers of 10. Here our simple fact is 4. And of course we have one power 10. And then we just have 12. Now we just need to add those together. You could probably add those in your head, right? 840. Oh, I'm sorry. 52. So 852. Oh my goodness. I love this math. <laughs> I know. I always say that. I do. But you know, it's just, this is really cool. So here we are in the very last section here, it looks like. And it says, record the product, use expanded form to help. Okay. What if you don't need it? Eh, okay, that's a good question. I don't know if you don't really need the help. I'll tell you what I'm going to do. I'm just going to do it in expanded form. Yeah, because that's what we've been doing. So get it in ourselves in the habit of doing that. The 4 times 59 is the same as 4 times, that's right, 50 plus 9. Okay, you get in the habit of understanding that. That might help you. Then that way I can move on. Now, how I would do this is multiply this term with that term. 
and I get 20 plus a power of 10, I get 200 plus, and now I'm going to do the four and maybe I should do this in another color. So we can see I'm going to take the four times the nine and of course I'm going to get, yeah, 36. Cool. And so my answer is going to be 236. I could say, is my answer reasonable? Well, we could do an estimate. Four times 60, that's what this could be written as, is equal to two, four, 240. Is 240 close to 236? Yeah, <laughs> like way close, you know what I'm saying? Okay, so I would say that's a great answer. Let's do the same thing with this one. Three times, and I'm just gonna do my whole, same parenthesis. I've got my 200, just looking at the place value, plus my 80, right into an expanded form. Okay, ooh, that eight, he's only worth eight though he's in the ones place. See, now I'm taking this and this is the distributor property. That's what we're doing. Oh, I even see right up here. I'm sorry, my, my eyes got off track. I said, explain how using a distributive property makes finding the product easier. Oh my goodness, make it so much easier because you're able to do a lot of mental math. We're able to do this in our head. That's the big thing. Three times two. Yeah, that's six. Two powers of 10 because we have two powers of 10 there gives us 600 plus three times eight, 24 plus one power of 10, plus 24. Tell me this isn't easier. You might be able to do mental math here. I would probably want to do this myself. If I, you could go ahead and line it up vertically. I'm just going to say 840 plus 24. It allows my brain just to think about those two first. And then I can add that on and go, oh, okay, it's just 864. Some of you might have been able to see that right away. Now, is my answer reasonable? Let's do our quick estimate. Three times 300, three times 300 is 900. Is 900 close to 864? It is, my friends. It is. And with that, voila, magic. Let math come alive. Or as I say to my classroom sometimes, are you not entertained? <laughs> okay, so anyway. Mr. Warren, get real. Yes, I should really get real. Yo, my friends, the, uh, the video is like done. It's over. No, it is. And that means I have to move on. That means you guys have to move on with your lives now. You have to break from this little time we've had with the math. This intensive math instruction. My friends.